Hello, my name is Creed, and welcome to Writer's Blockbuster. Today we get the pleasure of continuing the groovy legacy of Ashley Williams. That's right, we are going to be breaking down the third of the Evil Dead trilogy with the goofy and incredibly over-the-top Army of Darkness. The insanity in this movie is super fun, and just like in Evil Dead 2, this film sets a precedent on how a movie itself can become a character. Be warned that there are spoilers ahead, and if you enjoy horror movie breakdowns, then subscribe so that you don't miss out on the next one. We open a little while after Evil Dead 2 to see that Ash was taken prisoner. He narrates saying that he thinks it's around 1300 AD, and he recalls his past life, telling us about his job. Shop smart, shop S smart. Mm -hmm. He then gives a brief retelling of his story so far mentioning the demons that spawned from the Necronomicon and how he was forced to lop off his own hand once it became possessed. We then see the portal open, sending him into the past. Where the hell? He's surrounded by medieval knights, and the wise man says that he believes Ash is the man prophesied about in the Necronomicon itself. The commander, Lord Arthur, doubts the wise man, and thinks that it's more likely that Ash is a member of a rival group run by a man named Duke Henry the Red, who they have recently captured. They chain Ash up and declare that he will be going into the pit, where unknown horrors await. He's dragged to Arthur's castle, where we meet a woman named Sheila. We learn that her brother rode out with Arthur, but he died in the skirmish by one of Henry's men. She takes her anger out on Ash. <laughs> The prisoners are all dragged to the entrance of the pit. When they're unshackled, Henry says that he knows Ash isn't one of his vassals. He then introduces himself to Ash, giving him all of his names and titles. Well, hello, Mr. Fancy Pants. Lord Arthur then says that there was an evil that recently began to attack these lands, and says that Henry started a war in the middle of it all. Henry then gets defensive, saying that it was Arthur that started the war, but this doesn't get resolved as the doors to the pit then open. One of Henry's men is tossed into the pit, and a few moments later, a geyser of blood erupts from the opening. Swords are all then pointed at Ash, saying that he's the next one to be thrown down. Ash tries to plead his case, but Sheila throws a rock at his head, and he loses balance and falls. A pool of water covers the pit floor, and a possessed woman suddenly emerges and begins to beat on Ash. Ash fights back, but the walls covered in spikes are beginning to close in on them. The wise man then calls to Ash and throws him his trusty chainsaw. And now, Ash is ready to rumble. He starts up the saw before slicing off the woman's head in one swing. When he tries to climb out of the pit, another possessed creature breaks from the wall. He's able to disarm it fairly easily, before using his belt to escape the pit at the very last second. He then walks up to Arthur. Get on your shoelaces untied. Ash is completely unhinged in this movie, and man, it's wonderful. He threatens all of the town folk with a beating before ordering Henry to hop on his horse and leave the castle. <laughs> Arthur then calls for his sword and steps towards Ash, but a shot rings out and Arthur's sword breaks in two. Ash then shows off his shotgun. This is my boomstick! He warns the people not to try and harm him before he shoots again and knocks the possessed creature back into the pit. A bit later, Ash is being treated like a king. Sheila comes in and apologizes. First you want to kill me, now you want to kiss me. Blow. The wise man enters and begins to tell Ash the Chosen One prophecy, but he's not interested and just wants to get home as quickly as possible. One of the chambermaids then turns and screams, as she has become possessed. Ash finishes her off without issue, but the wise man says that the Deadites have taken the Necronomicon, and without the book, Ash will not be able to get back, so he has no choice but to agree and help them. With a sigh, Ash goes into the armory and begins to, uh, arm up. Groovy. That night, Sheila goes to visit him. 
She's quite bashful and shows that she's made him a cloak and tunic, but Ash is very rude to her, and after a few insults, she <laughs> slaps him in the face. I guess that's what does it for Ash though, as he gets up and chases after her. Give me some sugar, baby. The next day, they ride out. The riders stop just before they enter a place filled with evil, and the wise man has Ash recite an incantation that he will need in order to stop the evil from spreading. Ash rides in alone, but his horse gets spooked, and he's knocked off while still being chased. He escapes into a windmill and screams as something outside continuously bashes at the door. A bit later, Ash sees his reflection and he freaks out. When he looks down at these shattered pieces, we see multiple tiny versions of himself have come out of the shards. In an incredibly goofy sequence, the minis begin to antagonize Ash. They shoot at him, stab him with a fork, and cause him to step on a nail before he falls over and passes out. When he comes to, he's tied to the floor and one of the minis dives into his mouth, forcing him to swallow it. Ash breaks from his binds, but the mini inside of him is torturing him. He goes for a kettle of boiling water and chugs it, seemingly killing the mini guy inside of him. He then feels something strange on his shoulder, and an eyeball pops out and stares at him. Ash runs out of the windmill screaming that something is growing from him. When he stops, we see that another Ash is emerging from his side, but this one is just as antagonizing as the minis. <laughs> I'm blind! I'm blind! They fight until the second Ash breaks away from the first. The clone then says that he's the bad Ash, and the other one is good Ash. He dances around, but stops when our Ash points his boomstick at his face and blows him away. Good. Bad. I'm the guy with the gun. He straps bad Ash down and dismembers him before burying him behind the windmill. He rides off to find the Necronomicon, stopping when he comes across a graveyard. On an altar in the graveyard center, he finds three books that all look just like the Necronomicon. When he opens one, it turns into a black hole and sucks him inside of it. He pulls his way out. Whoa. Wrong book. Deciding between the other two, Ash makes another mistake and his hand is bitten by another false Necronomicon. It flaps around and attacks him, but comes to a rest as he throws it a few times. Just before he picks up the correct book, he remembers that he needs to recite the incantation. He begins it, but realizes that he's forgotten the final word. It was definitely an N-word. He does his best, kind of mumbling the incantation, and declaring that he's completed the task. Once he picks up the book, the world shakes and chaos ensues. As he's running through the graveyard, skeletal hands raise from the ground and trip him before assaulting his face. He breaks away and sprints back to his horse. We see lightning strike the grave of Bad Ash, and the evil clone rises, now completely disfigured. Ash makes it back to Arthur's castle. He gives the Necronomicon to the wise man, but admits that he didn't speak the words correctly. The wise man says that by not saying the incantation, the army of the dead will rise, and the evil will come searching for the book. Ash just wants to go home. He doesn't care about the people here, and despite their impending doom, he insists that they need to send him back. Arthur and the wise man are upset, but Sheila rushes forward and says that she believes Ash will still help them. He says that this isn't his place, and he's getting out of here, and Sheila walks away. A screech rings out in the night, and a flying deadite swoops in and abducts Sheila. Ash rushes after her, but can't do anything to save her. We then cut to the graveyard, where Bad Ash is ordering his, um, army of darkness to continue to dig up the corpses, which then come to life and join his forces. Sheila is thrown at his feet, and he plants a nasty kiss right on her. Panic is ensuing at the castle, as the scouts have seen that the army of the dead is less than two days' ride away. Ash shoots into the air and shuts everybody up. He says that he's staying to fight, and declares that they will need to ally with Henry the Red. The people rally behind him, now believing that they have a chance with the Chosen One on their side. 
We then see Bad Ash reveal a possessed Sheila to his army of bones. I may be bad, but I feel good. Preparations are made at Arthur's castle. Ash uses tools that he had in his car to learn how to make gunpowder and set some extra special defenses that we'll see a bit later. He teaches the people how to fight, and then we see the, uh, evil dead are at the castle doorstep. The assault begins and Ash has the soldiers fire arrows tipped with explosives at the skeletons. As another wave approaches, they launch catapults at the horde, blowing another group to smithereens. Despite their defenses, the dead are able to get to the castle gates and break into the walls. The two armies clash, and it seems that the dead will come out on top, but something shakes a large door, and a moment later, Ash rams through in his souped-out car. He rides through the skellies, giving the living a big advantage. He then sees Sheila, and when he tries to stop, his brakes don't work, and his car goes careening through the courtyard and explodes. Sheila shows that she is possessed, and she tries to stab Ash, but he kicks her off and she lands in the pit. Arthur begins to get overwhelmed, and all seems lost, but a call rings out that more riders are approaching, and we see that Henry the Red has finally arrived with his full forces, which is a trope that Peter Jackson totally stole when Gandalf and the Rohirrim arrived at Helm's Deep, I'm just saying. Bad Ash climbs the parapets, and Good Ash follows him up. Come to Papa. He breaks through the skeleton forces, but Sheila jumps onto his back and begins to attack him. You found me beautiful once. Honey, you got real ugly. When she charges forward, Ash throws her from the wall. He then throws a spear just in time to stop Bad Ash from getting the Necronomicon. The duel of the ashes begins. Good Ash arms himself with two swords and begins doing moves that would make even Aragorn proud. He flips over Bad Ash and stabs him in the back, but that doesn't stop him much. Good Ash is backed up against a wall, but that was Bad Ash's worst mistake. Good Ash grabs a torch and stabs it into Bad Ash's face, burning him to a crisp before tossing him over the walls. Ash is horrified to see that that didn't stop his evil twin. Crispified Ash now pulls himself back over the wall and smacks Flesh Ash into the courtyard below. He grabs the Necronomicon and flips down, ready to kill his good counterpart. Unfortunately for the Bonehead, he landed on a catapult. Good Ash smacks the Necronomicon out of Bony Boy's hand and cuts the rope, sending Bad Ash flying through the air moments before the gunpowder explodes. Ash finds Sheila laying in the dirt, but is relieved to see that she is no longer possessed. He pulls her to her feet, and they embrace. The forces of Henry and Arthur then come to a standstill in the courtyard. Swords are drawn, but Arthur and Henry step forward and embrace ending their feud for good. The armies cheer and celebrate, as the living have won. A bit later, the wise man gives Ash a vial and tells him another incantation, which will send him back to his proper time. Ash shares one last kiss with Sheila, before riding off and returning home. We then see Ash at his job in Esmart. He tells his co-worker the whole story of what just happened, and a customer overhears him. Suddenly, wind starts blowing through the store, and one of the customers shows that she's now possessed. Ash grabs a rifle from the display and stops the deadite. I'll swallow your soul! Come get some. The two brawl in the store, but of course, our man Ash comes out on top. Hail to the king, baby. And that is where this movie ends. Man, I feel like there just aren't movies out there like Army of Darkness, you know? Like, it's fun, and it has incredible character, but it's also got a budget, which makes it look really good, and it tells a really compelling story. This is one of my favorite trilogies of all time, and the difference between the three films in this trilogy is awesome, but it's also, like, it's really interesting. Who would have expected that the journey of five friends in a cabin would evolve and morph into a story of a chosen hero sent back to the 1300s in order to defeat a great evil that also just so happened to be his literal bad version that had spawned from his shoulder. Like, it's freaking crazy, man. <laughs> uh, like, I just thought of the stupidest analogy that it kind of fits with my thoughts on how these movies progress, actually. Like, you know how in Pokemon, the little monsters, they evolve into basically big versions of themselves, but then you take, like, Digimon, 
and the little monsters evolve from like a T-Rex into like a T-Rex with guns into like an angel in jean shorts that's carrying some guns that just has a T like a T-Rex on her backpack like it's super different super wacky well I, I think most movies kind of take the evolutionary progress of Pokemon but Evil Dead took the evolutionary progress of Digimon. This is the stupidest analogy I've, I've ever thought of. But it, it, it kind of fits. Like, it goes from a horror movie to a horror comedy movie to a medieval comedy horror with, like, a splash of mid-level uh, supermarket managing. <laughs> like, there you go. That, that's how my brain works. <laughs> uh, my, my quick closing thoughts on these movies is that you should definitely watch them. There's not a lot of movies out there that compare to them in my eyes. And especially like with the amount of growth and character that you get as you progress through the series. They're wonderful and and I absolutely love them. Hail to the king, baby. If you enjoyed this breakdown, then don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you wind up in medieval times, then be sure to truly memorize the incantation that the wise man tries to teach you. I promise it'll pay off. Bye-bye. <laughs>